So yeah, nearly there, not many to go yet. Um, today's offering is a bit kind of festive in quite a childish sort of a way, but it's Christmas so you're allowed. And today I have chosen Arthur Christmas, which I've only seen last couple of years, but really, really do enjoy it. It's such a kind of feel good and strangely gripping film. Um, in a way that, you know, when you're watching a film, you quite often have your phone out or you're on the laptop or whatever. It's one of the few films that I can sit and watch and just watch or maybe do a bit of sewing or something, you know, where actually my attention is mainly on the film, um, which is a bit of a rarity, kind of, I guess, nowadays for a lot of people. But Arthur Christmas, I just love. So Arthur Christmas is an animation. It's, um, it's, it's a kid's film. Let's call it a spade a spade, but... I'm a kid so I'm allowed to like it and it takes place at the North Pole. It starts with Santa delivering his presents. He's a bit doddery and a bit of an, an old buffoon. He's kind of stuck in his ways and, and faintly bemused by everything that's going on. He's like, yep, no, that's what else we're doing now, is it? Right, lovely, God, he said. And he has a wife who's voiced by Imelda Staunton who actually goes out and like has fights with polar bears and can do really, really cool things. But he gets all the presents for the family, including herself. At one point she gives him a wrapped present and says, that's the present for me, dear. And he goes, oh, there you go, Merry Christmas, darling, and gives it back. And she's like, oh, thank you very much, I wonder what it is. Um, she basically holds the fort together. She's very much the power behind the throne here. <laughs> she's, yeah, she's keeping it together. And they have two sons. Steve and Arthur. Steve is in charge of operations around Christmas Day, so he does all the high tech stuff, doing the stat navs, making sure all the presents are fully wrapped and prepped and in order and loaded. And he does everything from this control chair, sort of using espresso coffee to get through the night, and with a little like iPad type thing, con controls basically Christmas Eve for Santa. He's basically very much just the figurehead of the operation, which is how he describes it. And Arthur is a bit clumsy, but really loves the spirit of Christmas and is very much what Christmas is about. He is all about the kids and um, spending time with his family. He really loves Christmas Day and the Christmas dinner and the Christmas games that they play once Christmas Eve is out of the way. He is excited for that every year and he works in the poster room so he answers all the letters to kids on behalf of Santa and he collates what they want. So if somebody writes in and says please could I have such and such a thing in this colour, he makes sure that that is the colour of toy that they get because they've written to him and it's his responsibility to make sure that they have a good Christmas, he feels. Um, yeah, he's very much the festive side and Steve's much more logical. They're a, they're a bit um, Eleanor and Marianne Dashwood, if you will. No, I'm trying to put too much kind of culture on this now, aren't I? It's just a kid's film. Um, but yeah, they, that's, that's who they are. And one Christmas Eve, a toy is left behind. It's a bike for a girl that has written to Santa that Arthur has answered and yeah, she hasn't had her bike delivered. It's the first time in many a year that the bike, that a toy or a gift or whatever hasn't been delivered to a child. And Arthur is devastated by this. And Steve's like, well, it'll get delivered within the Christmas window. We'll just deliver it later on. It'll all be fine. Nobody will know. They'll upgrade the bike for her. She'll get a better one. That'll be compensation. That's enough. And Arthur's like, no, because then she won't believe in Santa because she's asked for this thing and she hasn't got it. She's she's believed. We need to maintain her belief. Nobody's listening to him, apart from Grand Santa, who is Santa's dad and has done the Santa thing before, you know, they were born. Um, and he says, yep, yeah, let's get the old sleigh out. Steve won't let you use the high-tech spaceshipy type thing. Let's get the old wooden sleigh and the reindeer and go deliver this. Um, we'll use the old fashioned map, we'll just do it the old fashioned way. We'll take an elf with us. So an elf kind of stirs away, they don't necessarily know she's there to begin with and they start off delivering this bike. And they go around the world 
they get into all kinds of scrapes trying to get to um, the address that she's given and you know they, they end up in a lion enclosure because Santa Grand Santa thinks they've gone over Paris but they haven't they're actually in the Serengeti and all these lions are coming and they get seen somebody thinks that they're an alien they get done on like speed cameras and all this and they get to this house deliver the bike and the bike's already there and he's confused but they're actually put in the wrong address that they're finding they've gone to the wrong house they need to start again and yeah, they get stranded on this beach and on this boat and Arthur's having a real crisis of Christmas confidence, if you will. And he sees the letter that the little girl has sent and it reminds him why they're delivering. And it's for the kids. It's the kids and the belief in Santa. That's why he has to do what he has to do. And he needs to get this bicycle to this little girl that specifically said, can I have this colour of bicycle? My friends say that you're not real and I've defended you. And yeah he can't let her down so they try again and by this time Santa and Steve realise that the old sleigh is missing realise what's going on they've gone after him the only thing is they put the address into the set of as well and Santa picks the first on the list which is exactly what Arthur did they go to the wrong house too so yeah they get to Arthur finally gets to to England to Cornwall where this little girl lives and he's heading through the village um, on this bicycle because it's the only way he can get there in time and dawn's breaking, like the light is coming up and it's getting more and more tense. Bryony the elf can wrap anything with three pieces of tape, that is her biggest claim to fame. She can wrap anything with three pieces of tape. She's wrapping the bike as he goes, he's doing a wheelie so she can do the front wheel and all this. And the little girl starts to stir and they're not in the house and it's getting more and more tense and you think, oh, she's going to wake up and they're not going to get there in time. She's going to stop believing in Father Christmas. And yeah, it's it's getting, getting a bit nervy. And then darkness falls again and she starts to go back to sleep. And they look up and it's the big sleigh spaceship that Santa uses nowadays, blocking out the light to give him a bit more time. So all of a sudden you've got Grand Santa, Santa, Steve and Arthur trying to deliver this present, fighting over who's going to do what. And in the end, Arthur puts it under the tree um, because he's done all the hard work and Santa's like, no, you go, you've got the right spirit, you put it in there. And Arthur wants to stay behind because he wants to see the reaction. And Steve's like, well, we need to get out of here. Grand Santa's spark out, he's knocked himself out or something. Um... And Santa's like, well, I've never never seen a kid have a reaction before. I'd quite like to see that. So they watch her get on this bike and she's absolutely thrilled. She's made up. You know, it's from Father Christmas. It's exactly what she asked for. She's riding around. Where in the world the parents think this bike's come from, I don't know. They, they've gone to bed the previous night with a set amount of presents under the tree and some with an extra one and they don't question it, which I always find slightly odd in films, but whatever. Um, yeah, Santa announces he's going to retire. He, Steve thinks he's going to have been retiring all the way through the film. Steve thinks he's got this job. He's he's got this sussed. And Santa retires and then says, "The person that's going to take over from me is Arthur. Arthur's got this. Arthur's got Christmas spirit. He believes in the kids. He wants to get Christmas right for them. And yeah, everyone's chuffed to bust him." And then it finishes with like this little montage um, to the tune of Make Someone Happy by Jimmy Durante. And it says that um, Mrs Claus is happy because Santa's retired and they're going to go salsa dancing now. Grand Santa's happy because he got to go out on the sleigh one last time and now he gets to spend Christmas Eve with his son. And they sit and just chill out on Christmas Eve, which they've wanted to do for years. Steve's still in charge of operations and the technicalities. Um, and he's upgraded a few things and he's happy. The reindeer are happy because they helped to drag the um, spaceshipy type sleigh now. They sort of add their reindeer power to it to make it go a bit faster, so they're happy. Um, Brian is happy because she's put in charge of wrapping, and Arthur's happy because he's Father Christmas. And yeah, everyone's happy. And it's really, really good because... I think the reason that I like it is 
it, even though it faintly exasperates me when I'm really like, get to the house, drop the bicycle off, what's wrong with you? It's it's one of those like affirming films like we've seen before in this list where if you believe in Father Christmas, everything will be alright. And even though Arthur is a Christmas, he's part of the family, he gives up belief at one point and actually when he has that moment of no, I really do need to keep believing. That's when he powers through and things happen and he gets things done. And it's only because he's been the good egg all the way through believing in Christmas and doing Christmas for all the right reasons that he gets everything sorted and put together because he understands and he understands the kids and what they need out of Santa. And yeah, they they the, the little girl really responds to that and I think that's brilliant. That's why I love that film. Even at the end, even though you feel like almost like Steve could be the bad egg of this film and could be a bit of a wrong one, bit of a baddie. He's like, yeah, do you know what? Arthur's done good. He's he's the right choice. And everyone kind of gets everything worked out their way and I really, really like that in the film. I really like how Mrs Claus goes out and wrestles polar bears and can do really cool things like that and it's just really underappreciated. Um, and she just kind of quietly plods on and and is an absolute badass. I love that about her. I think there's a lot of really cool little details in the film that I really enjoy. I love a film with little things that you notice, sort of second or third viewing. So yeah, don't just watch it once. I mean, watch it once today. Don't watch it twice in a row. That'd be crazy. Um, But yeah, Arthur Christmas. Definitely a kid's film, but it's one of those ones that even though you're an adult, you can definitely still enjoy it.